Let's start off with the announcements. So these are the announcements for May 29th of 2022. So the Synod of the Covenant, so it's assembly on May 23rd, 2022, the Synod of the Covenant approved a job description for a new contact, contract position organized of the Synod Communities of Color. This leader will draw on a community organizing approach to connect individuals and churches of color with each other to discover joint interests as well as hopes for shared ministries and support from the Senate. It is a term position, is a term position for approximately about one year. So, and then it's approximately about half time and it will, guide, it will be guided by a steering committee and report to the Senate executive. The Asian, Black, Latino, and Hispanic, Middle Eastern, and Native American communities have much to teach and much to gain as joint ministries bubble up and facilitate by the organize, organizing position. So please contact in your announcements um, Chip Hardwick at 309-530-4578 and his email is listed in announcements as well. It is time to celebrate the end of a successful school year for many. Woo! and your College yes. Hill family, Hallelujah. yes and amen, <laughs> wants to celebrate with all of you. So if you have graduated from high school, college, or any type of academic program, please, please send us your name and the achievement. So um, did you have a perfect attendance? Just let us know. Graduation is our main celebration, but we wanna hear about all year, all year round, all schools and their successes. So email the church secretary with your information or call and leave a message on the church voicemail. So the deadline for that information is Monday, June 6th. Somebody say Monday, June 6th. Monday, June 6th. Yes, please remember that. <laughs> okay, we have a job announcement for the Dayton Scholars. I know we talked about this, but um, that's by St. Margaret's Episcopal Church. Um, in Dayton, so you know, reach out to the name and the email and email address. So Dayton Scholars is a community-based math, social, um, emotional um, literacy program serving elementary school age children in Dayton, Ohio, who need reading instruction. So we are glad to announce the return of our program for the fifth year. So our program, yes! <laughs> Amen. Our program includes summer school and recreation programs at multiple sites. Um, it was amazing to have it, so I'm so happy that we're continuing this program. Um, so just be aware of your announcements and the dates. Um, are there any other announcements, Brother Marcus? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All righty, so. We, um, as Sister Q said, we have a lot of great things um, happening this summer. Um, as you all know, in the past, we have partnered with um, Believers Christian Fellowship every year for Vacation Bible School, where I am pleased to announce that we were approved and we are going to be having Vacation Bible School for the summer of 2022. So with that being said, I am calling on all College Hill Church members, visitors, I'm calling on all the ministering units, the session, the deacons, the Presbyterian men, Presbyterian women, Hispanic ministry, and so on and so forth um, to um, help us do this for our youth. It's been what, two, two, it's been since 2019. So it's been two, over two years since we've had Vacation Bible School and Believers is going to be joining us um, this summer. It's gonna be the last week in June, so the week of June 27th through July 1st. And so, um, we, it's not that far away, so um, there's lots of ways that you can serve that don't require you to be a teacher. I know a lot of people, when they think of helping out with like Sunday school or vacation Bible school, that we're asking you to be a teacher. There's many ways that you can serve, so if you are thinking about wanting to help out, you can see myself and, um, or any of the Sunday school teachers, or you can see um, Pastor Worthen, 
and um, just let us know in which way you would like to serve. Of course, we'll need um, volunteers to help out to serve food. Um, we'll need volunteers to help out, you know, to escort the children. If you're interested in being a teacher or a teacher's assistant or something like that, if you want to be a part of the planning of it or help us do worship, um, then any way possible, then you can help AV anything. So um, we want to get this rolling. We want to make it great because we got to get our youth back. We want to, you know, get back into the swing of things. You know, COVID can't keep us down forever, right? Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. And I don't know if Sister Q already mentioned it because it's not in your written announcements, but it is on the screen. The office and the church will be closed this Sunday due to the Memorial Day to allow um, everyone to have time off. And also on Wednesday, the secretary will be out of the office due to comp time. But uh, we will be checking some, uh, er, checking for any urgent emails or messages um, uh, the, on those two days. Amen. Amen. Greetings. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the joyful. We rejoice with you. Welcome to the tired and the weary. Come and take your rest. Welcome to the lonely and left out. May you find community among us. Sean bienvenidos todos los que están gozosos. Nos regocijamos con ustedes. Sean bienvenidos todos los que están cansados. Vengan y descansen en Dios. Sean bienvenidos los que se sienten solitarios y abandonados. Que se sientan acompañados y como parte de una comunidad entre nosotros. Welcome to the foreigner, to the stranger. To the refugee, may you find safety here. Welcome to every nation, every race, every orientation, every identity. May you find hospitality here. For the God who delights in all of creation is in our midst. Sean bienvenidos los extranjeros, los refugiados, que encuentren seguridad aquí, en este lugar. Sean bienvenidos los que llegan de cualquier nación, raza, orientación, identidad, que puedan sentir nuestra hospitalidad, porque el Dios que se deleita en toda su creación está entre nosotros. Yes. Amen. College Hill is a multicultural family of faith, welcomes diversity in our worship, in our ministry, in all of the world. We hope you find something in our prayers, in our praise, and in our music, or our ministry that makes you feel a part of our family, and most of all, a part of God's family. All are welcome here. Amen. College Hill is a family multicultural de fe que acoge la diversidad en nuestra adoración en nuestro ministerio y en todo el mundo. Esperamos que encuentren algo en nuestras oraciones y alabanzas, en nuestra música o ministerio, que los haga sentir parte de nuestra familia y sobre todo de la familia de Dios. Todos sean bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Amén. Amen. And before we start our introduction of visitors, um, we'll have an opening selection by Brother Mac. Feel free to sing along if you know it. With masks on, we're able to sing and praise the Lord together. So feel free to join in with our opening hymn. And I would like also, I will sing it three times around. On that third time, I would ask that you stand and join me with singing the last, let there be peace on earth.
this on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, brothers all are we. Let me walk with my brother. solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. sisters are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with we let this be the moment now with every step I take let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let Way to bring in the passing of the peace. Somebody give God some glory. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. One thing I forgot to mention in the announcements is um, hopefully the ushers have them back there still. or Maybe they passed them all out. Is this newspaper, and I may be mispronouncing it, La Meganota. 
It is a Spanish uh, newspaper in Spanish for Cincinnati and Dayton. And so we wanted to be sure for those that wanted to read this. It is in Spanish, so you might need help if you don't have that ability. Um, but this has all kinds of things about our Hispanic Latino community and events that are going on. And so we're going to be in touch with them about um, continuing to get this paper. But they brought it by several copies, and we want to be sure everyone got a copy who wanted one. Amen. Also, we're going to officially recognize the graduates at another time, and I think we might even have some scholarship money um, that we've announced that is going to be um, made available to our graduates and, and to some of our um, college students. But right now, I just want to take an opportunity just because we can. Are there any graduates here today? Any gr uh, high school or college graduates here today? Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to keep recognizing you. Good to see you, Brother Dylan. Amen. All right. So with that, um, we want to take an opportunity before we pass the piece. Are there any visitors that we need to recognize today? Any visitors that would like to be recognized? Any visitors? All right. Looks like we all might know each other. And uh, we're all family, so as we greet one another in the peace of Christ, we don't just say, hello, how you doing? But we pass a blessing on, uh, it's in English we say, the peace of Christ be with you. And in Spanish, la paz de Cristo este contigo. So wave to somebody, wave at the cameras, let them know that you're happy to see them this morning. What a blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. And if you're worshiping the Lord from home, then hallelujah and praise the Lord for you there. Amen. Because we are all, the God of all people is with us wherever we are. So if you're sitting on the couch with a cup of coffee and a donut, or if you're in here in the sanctuary, we're all praising the same God. And so we just want to be sure that we give God his due. Amen. With that, our Old Testament scripture reading. Oh, before I go to that, one more thing. Um, you all know that we have, uh, we're allowing congregational singing now. Since Sister Dominique is um, away on vacation for this Memorial Day weekend, um, we don't have uh, lyrics in this time, but hopefully starting in June, we will have lyrics there for you to sing along with us and participate a lot more as we go forward. Can anybody say amen? All right, the word of the Lord from Psalm 97, our Old Testament scripture says, The Lord is king, let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world, the earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame. Those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the town of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O God. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, O oh, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Can anybody say amen? <coughs> we'll now have our opening prayer by Sister Quantaria Darkin, who's going to lead us as we uh, go to the throne of grace. O oh Lord, our God, you are worthy of all the praise. You are the God who never fails to keep his promises. We thank you that in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we see your love, justice, mercy, provision, and victory. You are the God who lifts those who are weighed down. You are the God who provides for your children 
our desire to praise you, you as long as we live, inhabit our praises, O oh God, as we gather together through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for praise and worship, so get excited to get on your feet, clap your hands, stomp your feet, raise your hands, say hallelujah, because God has been good to us. Amen. Glad that Pastor Worthen announced that we are allowing congregational, congregational singing. We don't have the words, but I'm sure you all know these songs. So all that are able, could you please stand and join Sister Q and I as we take you guys back a little bit. You know, there's nothing like those old songs, right? Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I live my down glory glory hallelujah since i live my burden down glory 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 hallelujah since i live my burden down glory glory Treat me like they used to since I laid my burden down. Friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burden down. And I'm going home, I'm going home to live with Jesus since I laid my Burden down. I'm going home to live with Jesus since I lay my burden down. Come on, God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, my God is a good God. Yes, He is. Oh, my God. Mine. Victory 
to celebrate. That's the way they open up church. Just claim the victory in advance. Worship and praise the Lord. Be happy when you come into heaven. Is it enter to it into his gates with praise and thanksgiving? Before anything happens, we ought to be praising the Lord, thanking him for all that he's done and all that he is. What a mighty God we serve. Can anybody say amen? <coughs> Can anybody say hallelujah? hallelujah? Anybody want to praise the Lord today? Yeah. All right, amen, amen. It's our time for offerings. Give God some glory for an opportunity to give. Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. Give God some glory for an opportunity to give. Has he blessed you? Has he been good to you? Yeah. So when we give, we give back just in recognition and trust of all that God has already done and it continues to do. Consider the lilies. Look at the birds of the air. Jesus pulls our attention away from our worries about scarcity and turns our gaze toward the beautiful gifts of God's creation. Signs of abundance and grace surrounding us always. Trust may be difficult for us as it was for those early disciples. Yet we bring our gifts this morning with the assurance of God's care for every morning of our lives. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. For those that are present, we ask that you prepare your offerings now. For those that are worshiping online after the service, you may send it directly to College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Or you can give electronically through our Faith Life app, F-A-I-T-H-L-I-F-E app. You can go, do this three different ways. Go to faithlife.com, search for College Hill Community Church, text the word give and the, and the amount to 937-230-6530, or download the app and search for College Hill and verify the address of 1547 Philadelphia Drive because there is more than one College Hill Church. Um, regardless of how you give, we thank you for your faithfulness and support of this church and in thanksgiving to God. As we turn you over to the directions of the ushers as they come to collect our gifts, um, we invite you to just continue to praise the Lord with us because everything is a celebration in the house of the Lord. Amen. Gracious and loving God, there are so many things to thank you for, so many reasons to be grateful, so many things to celebrate. We should have joy, joy, unspeakable joy, just at the thought of you, just at the incredibleness of your name, just at the awesomeness of your presence, just at the, the amazingness of your generosity, your grace, and your mercy. So, Lord, we thank you that we can't even beat you giving. 
But Lord, we ask that you continue to challenge us, continue to use us for the uplifting of your kingdom. Use these gifts, Lord, that have been collected, Lord, and may they be used in things that glorify you and touch people in the world to know what a mighty God you are. Lord, bless the givers in their hearts. And Lord, help us to know that as we give, you give even more. Use it as only you can. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let the saints say, amen. 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 With that, I think we have one more selection as we prepare to go, not go, as we prepare to hear what thus saith the Lord. So won't you praise the Lord with us on this incredible day? So when we were in a rehearsal, I had another song in mind that I was going to do, but in the middle of rehearsal, this song um, came to me. It was it's called Walk With Me, Lord. And the reason I chose that song, and I, and I believe that, you know, sometimes, you know, we make plans, but God has other plans. I want to just remind us that no matter what we do, no matter where we go, we should always be making sure and asking God to be with us. And... As we transition to summer, as we are in a spirit of, as we are in a, a season of shift, we have to remember that um, one thing that I've learned in my walk with God is to, and this is a weird thing that happened, is ask God to put me in uncomfortable positions. How many of you guys can say that you've actually prayed to God and asked him to put you in an uncomfortable position? Because that's a, that's a weird request. Like, God put me in an uncomfortable position, but that is the only way that we can grow and grow higher and more stronger in Christ. And when we do these things, we have to make sure that Jesus is with us and God is with us all the time. Amen. Amen. Hold my hand, 
hand while I'm on my tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me when I'm in trouble. Lord, walk with me. When I'm in trouble, Lord, walk with me. While I'm on my tedious journey, I want Jesus, oh, Jesus, to walk with me. Don't you leave me alone. No, 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 no. Don't leave me alone, Lord. Don't you leave me alone while I'm on my tedious journey. Yeah, I want Jesus, yeah, oh, yeah, to walk. Walk with me, oh, walk with me, Lord, oh, walk with me, while I'm on my tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk. Walk when I'm in trouble, Lord. Walk in my trials. Walk with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Walk with me, Lord. I don't know what the song was supposed to be, but that's what the song was supposed to be. I don't know what you were going to sing before, but that's what the song was supposed to be. That's what happens when you listen to the Spirit of God and do what God plans as opposed to what we plan. Amen? Are there any um, nursery, school, nursery age youth here today that wanted to go to a, a youth Sunday school? Any nursery age? All right. Sounds like we will go ahead. Amen. Amen. Whoo, hallelujah. Does anybody want the Lord to walk with you? He says, he walks with me, he talks with me, tells me that I am his own. That's the way it should be. And when Jesus is walking with you, you are never 
I mean, it's, it's different than when you say you're never alone. It means, doesn't mean you're not by yourself. It means you're never alone. You always have help. You always have guidance. You always have power. You always have love. That's what it means when you say, Jesus, walk with me. He'll guide you. He'll, he'll, he'll get a hold of you when you start to, start to take a step off in the wrong direction. He'll, 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 he'll put his hand over your mouth when you know you're about to say something that you shouldn't say. He'll, he'll put some words in your mouth that you should say, and he'll give you some joy when you didn't see it and some gratitude when you didn't expect it. When you walk with God, and it's not always easy, he'll give you courage to do things that you didn't think that you could do. But when you say, walk with me, Lord, as Brother Marcus says, you know, ask to, you know, to, to, to get, get into those uncomfortable places, because those are the places where we transform. Transformation is never comfortable, and it's never easy, but it's always worth it. Our word today comes from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 6. I invite you to stand as you are able. Now, the NRSV translation should be what's up on the screen. <clears throat> but I'm reading from the Amplified translation that is just a little bit different because it, um, it tends to give a little bit more information that's not there. It, when it says the Amplified Translation, it gives you some extra words in there to be sure that you get the emphasis and understanding of what's available. So read along and hear the extra emphasis that the uh, Amplified Translation gives for the gospel, from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, 21. Hear now a word from the Lord. Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers, there your heart will be also. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let the people say, thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I'd like to talk to you for just a little while today from the question, what kind of treasures are you building up? What kind of treasures are you building up? Won't you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, then use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Lord, I ask you that you hide, hide me behind your cross, that only your words and no other go forth, and not will we only hear them, but do, do them also. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let the church say amen. <coughs> As most of you know, this is my first time preaching in over two weeks. I came down with COVID for the first time that I'm aware of. I mean, people said they've gotten COVID and didn't know it. As far as I, for the first time that I'm aware of, I got COVID and it hit me really hard as I had always thought that it would because I deal with asthma. So with my asthma, I've been hospitalized um, various times. Whenever I get sick, it turns into bronchitis or pneumonia, and I go to the hospital. So I had no idea what COVID would be like, but I thought it's going to be pretty difficult. Now, I'm still not back to 100% as I tire really easily, and I have breathing uh, problems and coughing fits regularly. 
but, 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 but I'm here to talk about it. So that's one thing right there. To be able to talk about what God has brought you through. Can anybody say it's a blessing to be able to say I made it through. I don't know how I did. Some other folk didn't, but I am here by the grace and might of God, and I praise him for it. I praise God today for friends like Bishop Cox who stepped in and stood in the, go stood in the gap to let me rest and, and, and recover. And I thank God for each and every one of you for the messages and the thoughts and prayers that you sent my way. And I thank and praise God for giving scientists the knowledge to develop vaccines, boosters, and even medicine that helps reduce the lethal effects of COVID. Because I truly believe that's what kept me out of the hospital or worse. Take advantage of it if you can, roll the dice if you choose to, but I'm, I'm here to tell you, I think it is by God's grace and that medicine that I'm standing before you today. Call for no cough, tiredness or no tiredness, I am grateful, I am grateful to God. But that leads me to what I'd like to talk about today, especially this Memorial Day weekend, and that is mortality. Mortality. Mortality is defined as the quality or state of being a person or thing that is alive and therefore certain to die. I'm going to say that again. Mortality is defined as the quality or state of being a person or thing that is alive. If you are breathing here today, you are alive. If you've got blood coursing through your veins, if you, if you are able to have thought and feeling, you are alive. But the flip side of that is therefore, if you are alive, you are certain at some point to die. Now, that may sound a little scary or depressing. And in fact, I, I, most people don't even like to think about, let alone talk about death. Yet, death is a fact of life. And I would submit that the reality of death is not something that should be avoided, but it should actually be confronted regularly. It should be ever present in our thoughts because death is unavoidable. You know, the scripture tells us, and I would have looked it up if I had thought about it ahead of time, but it says something like, uh, don't ever tell somebody I'll see you tomorrow or we're going to go on this day and do this or that because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know, I bet there's some people here thinking about what they're going to go home and eat, what they've already cooked, what's waiting for them, what restaurant they're going to. Some people have got some plans into next week. Somebody's got a vacation in June or July or August, planning on a family reunion that we can't say we're ever going to make it to. We need to be realistic and understand that there's a lot of things that we want to do in life, but nothing is guaranteed because we don't know the day nor the hour that we will be called home. Now, you may not have come to church to hear this, but I, I would submit to you that considering our own mortality is important because it is the reality of death that makes life more precious. It is knowing that this experience that we are having on earth, it won't last forever that should make us treasure the incredible moments and people that we are blessed to encounter. Life as we know it is especially precious because it is limited. Never take for granted the people that love you or that you love. Never take for granted a day, any day, no matter what you're doing, no matter how good or bad you think it is. Never take for granted the time that you have because it's precious, because it is not infinite. Now, I have to be honest that when I was initially diagnosed with COVID, it was one of the first times in a while that I had seriously contemplated that I could die 
very shortly from this. I mean, I had always considered the possibility of contracting COVID as many others have, and that's why so many still remain self-quarantined. But while I did not let COVID stop me from preaching and doing ministry because God is bigger than any virus, amen, I was careful, but I never let it stop me from doing any of the things, any of the things that I knew that I needed to do. But somewhere in the back of my mind, I wondered what would happen if I got it. How many people here have had COVID so far? Look around. I mean, don't see, we're almost afraid to say it, but you know, look around. See how many people have been touched already and they're still here. Amen. Amen. All right. But see, I was particularly worried because, and other people might be able to say this, they have their own conditions. We know of age, color, immune compromise. There's different things that makes COVID more difficult for people. And, and, and I was concerned because I knew my breathing, my breathing was already compromised with my asthma. So even with the vaccine and the, bo and the boosters, it could still be very bad for me. So when I saw those two red lines on the stick, you know, if you, take, if, you, if you take the test, right, when you see those two red lines, you know what it means. And the reality hit me smack dab in the face. You are very sick and you could possibly die. That's what I said to myself. Now, I didn't start writing my last will and testament. I, I did not call all of my loved ones to say goodbye. You know, I wasn't convinced that, that, that this was it, but the struggling to breathe daily, feeling like I was coughing up my lungs, it, it can be scary and really make you consider your own mortality. And when you think about your own death or even the death of your loved ones, because sometimes we're more worried about the people around us than we are ourselves, amen? Just thinking about us or someone we love dying, it can be sobering. So it seemed only fitting on this Memorial Day weekend as many people are remembering and commemorating loved ones who have passed on. I, I thought it was important for us to deal with the elephant in the room, death. It's there. Is there? You can act like it's not there. You can pretend it's not there. You can hope that it's not there, but it's still there. And you can't control it. For vir virtually everyone here has lost one or more loved ones or people that you've known. Not to mention the loss of so many other people we may not know directly, but have heard about or seen on the news. After all, Memorial Day started out... <clears throat> As <coughs> See, that's what I said. The word, th th this won't get in the way of the word. I guarantee you that. I will not. Th 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 this has never happened to me in my life. I have never not been able to finish a sermon. So watch God. So think about it. Memorial Day started out as a day on which those who died in active military service are remembered and honored. So I, I invite right now to people to stand who are grateful for the lives that have been sacrificed in military service. I invite you to stand if you are, if you are grateful to the people who have served in the military for your safety. Look at that. Look at that. Everybody's been touched on Memorial Day. Think about it. The people who have lived and sacrificed for us. And yeah, just raise your hand if you can't get up. Praise the Lord. We ought to say thank you regularly. When you see somebody in uniform, be sure to say thank you for your service. You may be seated. Now, I hope you don't get too comfortable because now I'm going to invite anyone to stand who has lost family members, friends, or loved ones during the pandemic for any reason. If you have lost family, friends, or loved ones during the pandemic for any reason, whatever happened, please stand. Look at that. Look at that. You may be seated. Or you might want to stay standing depending on, we're going to do this one more time. I invite anyone to stand who is sickened, 
traumatized, saddened, sorrowful, or outraged over the many children and adults who have lost their lives in mass shootings. In Texas, New York, California, Connecticut, all over the nation, and in Dayton, Ohio, Oregon District 2019. Look at that. Everyone in this place is standing or raising their hands. You may be seated. According to NPR, the U.S. has surpassed 200 mass shootings this year. Mass shootings are counted as more than four, four or more people at the same time. 200, and we're in May, with 27 being school shootings that have taken place so far this year. 27. See, like I said, you may not have come to church to hear about this, but as people of faith and humanity in general, we have to find a way to make sense of this insanity and live with the reality that we are surrounded by death one way or another. You know, all you, can, you can go outside and have an accident that you didn't anticipate. You can fall down the steps, not to mention if somebody happens to have a gun or a knife or wants to break into your house, there's nothing that we can do about it. Death is there. It's looming for each and every one of us. And I'm not trying to scare anybody, but whether it's by natural causes or the evil and violence that surrounds us, our time is limited. So what do we do about it? Well, the first thing that I would say, what do you think I would say? Pray, right? We love, church folk love to pray. People of faith love to pray. So I got, yeah, I'm going to say pray. Because prayer is a powerful thing. Prayer has a way of putting things into perspective. And in this case, I would say a very purposeful prayer. Not just something to make you feel better, which prayer can absolutely do. Prayer can make you feel better. But, but prayer, I would say for this, prayer as a call for peace and action at the same time. Has anybody heard of something called the serenity prayer? Serenity prayer? Okay. All right. Amen. It's often prayed in recovery circles, but it's become popular with people all over. I, I've even prayed it here on occasion. Now, most people don't pray the whole thing and don't even know the whole prayer, but there's a part of the serenity prayer that many can recall, and it goes like this. You can say it with me if you remember. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen? If you don't know it, Google it. Write it down. Memorize it because that'll save you on some, on some occasions. It's a beautiful prayer. And the reason that I think so many people can relate to this prayer is because there is an acknowledgement in this prayer that there are some things in the world that are beyond our control. There are some things in the world that no matter what you do, you can't change it. There is absolutely nothing we can do to change them, even if we want to. So we need a prayer for serenity, for peace in our spirit, to allow us not to stress out and worry about things beyond our control. Like things that have happened in the past. You know what I'm saying? You know that old saying, don't cry over spilled milk. It's already done. There's nothing you can do about it. We can't go back in time. If you've hurt someone or you've been hurt or you have regret, don't waste your time obsessing over things you cannot change. It's already done. If so, some other things that we might need to pray over, you think about, you know, we want to pray for world peace. That's a big one, right? World peace. We would like to have world peace. I want it. You want it. I'm sure virtually everybody in the world wants it. But one person, one person, unless they're Jesus, cannot do it by themselves. 
world peace is bigger than all of us. So don't let it keep you up at night because for the most part, it is beyond one person's control. You don't need to lay there unable to sleep, unable to think, stressed out about things you cannot control. Same thing about poverty, gun violence, racism, sexism, all of the other isms and systems. There are systems of oppression and inequity that will exist in this world until Jesus comes again. And that's just the reality. Even Jesus said there will always be poor people in the world. There will always be poor people in the world. So we have to understand in the perspective of things that we might be able to make a difference, but some things we can't change on our own. So we don't need to stress out about stuff that we can't fix. As much as we don't want these things to be a part of our world, they exist anyway. Yet we need to find peace that surpasses all understanding. Not the sort of peace that the world or people give, because if people or the world give it, then people or the world can take it away. See, we want a peace that you can rest in to know that if something is beyond your control, that's okay, because that means now it's in God's hands. Therefore, even when crazy stuff is going on around you, when you don't understand how people can do the things that people do, when the storms are raging in your life, you can still have peace. That's why the word says in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is a peace that will make you grateful when people expect you to be complaining. There's a peace that will chase away stress when you have every reason to worry. There's a peace that allows you to ignore when people gossip about you and lie on you. There's a peace that will give you comfort when friends turn their backs on you. Peace when there's more bills than there is money in the bank. Peace when the doctor says they've done all that they can do. Peace when you you can fill in the blanks with whatever it is that you're dealing with. Because our God did not put us on this earth to worry and stress and be anxious. He said, don't worry about anything, but give it over to me. If you can't fix it, trust him with it. That's how you get serenity, the state of being calm, peaceful, and untroubled. It doesn't necessarily mean that your problems go away. It just means that you know your problems are not bigger than your God. What's impossible for us is always possible with him. So give it over to God and anything that you cannot change or deal with on your own, give it to him and enjoy your life to its fullest because that's what God wants for us. However, somebody say however. You all knew that was coming. It is a cheap faith that leaves everything in God's hands and requires us to do nothing. It's a cheap faith that says, I'm giving it over to God. I, 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 can't, I can't help that homeless person. I'm giving that over to God. I, I saw that person be mistreated, but I'm giving that over to God. I'm, everything around us, I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm giving it over to God. That's a cheap sort of faith when you put everything in God's hands and think that there's nothing that you're supposed to do. For the second part of that serenity prayer, ask that God grant me the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom, come on now, the wisdom to know the difference. As people of faith, we are called to make a difference in this world, to leave a spiritual footprint that says we were there. Now, the question is, what sort of footprint are you leaving? Amen? As we talked about earlier, We don't come here to stay. If someone has told you that, they done told you wrong. We don't come here to stay. James 4 and 14 says, for you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. A lifetime is just a moment, a blink of an eye in the span of eternity. The question is, what do we do with our limited time? 
That's where Matthew 6 comes in, where Jesus says, Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth, where moth and rust can destroy them. That, 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 that's things that can be uh, eaten up and destroyed, where thieves break in and steal. People can take your reputation. They can take your stuff. They can destroy a lot of stuff. Don't worry about that. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves cannot break in and steal. Still, for there, where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers will be also. Jesus said this because he knows what the world requires of us. See, all of our lives, society teaches us to gain and accumulate money and power, prestige and influence, control and material stuff. Houses, cars, nicer cars, clothes, nicer clothes, jewelry, nicer jewelry, more stuff and more stuff. And enough is never enough. Get as much as we can and squirrel it away for a rainy day just in case something happens. Ignore your family if that means getting more money. The world tells you, steal from your company if you can get away with it. The world says, go ahead and oppress entire races of people if that means you get to be on top. The world says, suppress those voices and votes if they'll get in your way. The society will tell you, hold on to guns and weapons of violence if it makes you more powerful. Society says, demand your right not to wear a mask and get anybody sick that you want. Society says, put dishonest and racist people in power if that means you'll benefit from it. Society says, it's all about the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, and only the strong will survive. They call it thinning the herd. And that's the way a lot of people live. But Jesus tells us how to live a meaningful life where we leave something behind of value, something eternal. It is important how, how we, what we do with the little time that we have and how this makes a difference in the world because the important thing is not about how we die as much as it is about how we live. Because like we said, we can't control our death. When your day comes, it's your day. Now, we don't want it to be in a tragic way. You know, we want it to be a natural way. But when your day comes, there's nothing you can do about it. We can stand and worry about how we die, or we can worry about what we can control, which is how we live. Think about it. We talked about the things that we cannot change. Well, there are things that we can help change. And those things are what really makes a difference, especially when it comes to helping somebody else. I, on my own, cannot guarantee to stop violence, but I can start with making sure I don't add to it. I can do that. And I can use my voice or my, my position or my influence to help somebody else. So while the NRA is meeting to talk about how to keep weapons of mass destruction in the hands of civilians, that's their choice. And that's their life and their voice. But there are others choosing to do something else with theirs. San Francisco Giants manager Gabe Kapler, I don't know him because I'm not a big sports person, but I knew who he was once he said something important. He said that he won't participate in the national anthem as an act of protest over gun violence in the United States. Now, they've already started eating him up alive in the media. I don't care. Because he's, according to Time, Kapler wrote in his own personal blog, blog, I'm often struck before our games by the lack of delivery of the promise of what our national anthem represents. He said, we stand in honor of a country where we elect representatives to serve us, to thoughtfully consider and enact legislation that protects the interest of all the people in this country and to move this country forward towards the vision of the shining city on the hill. 
He said, but instead, we thoughtlessly link our moment of silence and grief with the equally thoughtless display of celebration for a country that refuses to take up the concept of controlling the sale of weapons used nearly exclusively for the mass slaughter of human beings. He said, we have our moment over and over and then we move on without demanding real change from the people that we empower to make these changes. He said, we stand, we bow our heads and the people in power leave on recess celebrating their own patriotism at every turn. That man needs to run for president. And this comes six years after uh, Colin Kaepernick, who began kneeling during the anthem in 2016. His goal was to bring systemic racial and ethnic inequality closer to the front of American minds in the hope that such evils will be eradicated. His demonstration, kneeling during the playing of the national anthem, was a spotlighted plea for a more peaceful and just society. What did he get for trying to make a change? Well, he still hasn't played in the NFL since that time. Since 2016, they sat him down for kneeling on the national anthem to bring about peace and reconciliation in our nation. He didn't get a treasure so far on earth, but I guarantee you he's getting one in heaven. And he's leaving behind some, a reputation that is bigger than anything he could have done in the NFL as far as plays. Because he stood up for something that was going to help people and make a difference in the long run. Now see, I'm not here to necessarily debate the right or left wing of beliefs. That's not what I'm doing. This is not about partisan politics or anything like that. It's simply about what we're storing up on earth and in heaven how we treat one another, what will be our legacy when we leave this earth as we inevitably all will. And let us not forget, because somebody might say, you know, this death thing is still too scary. I said, I don't want to deal with this. But let us not forget that death is not the end, but it is the door that opens up to eternal life in God through Christ. On Memorial Day and every other day that we think of loved ones who have passed on, yes, there is sorrow and grief because we are all separated for a time, but there is also joy. Because we don't grieve as others do who have no hope. For to be absent from the body is to be what? Present with the Lord. Come on now. And we are assured that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to celebrate us from the love of God and Christ Jesus, our Lord. So as people of faith, we celebrate death through Christ. But we also are called to live in a way that makes our lives worthwhile. I mentioned a few weeks ago a good friend of mine who I actually consider him my brother from another mother. Michael Johnson, Reverend, the Reverend Michael Johnson passed away. Michael was one of the kindest, most caring, justice-fighting, generous people I have personally witnessed in my life. He truly practiced what he preached. Every time he did something, it was to help somebody. We hated to see Michael coming because we knew if he was coming our way, he was trying to gather us to get us to do something. Either bring ourselves, our votes, or our money for a cause. He met a young man in prison who had been putting away. He did, he did the crime. But he, as, as is usually the case, as an African-American young man, 18 years old, he had committed a crime. He didn't kill anybody. But he had been committed, um, he had been uh, sentenced to, I want to say, 15 years for, it was either a drug charge or stealing, something like that. And is, you know, as usual, far worse of a sentence than his other white counterparts would have gotten. Not only that, but every time he came up for parole, they denied it. He served his entire 15 years. 
But when he met Michael Johnson, Michael said, I'm going to help you however I can. He was like, yeah, whatever. And he said, Michael would come back month after month after month and sit with him and visit with him and pray with him. Then he said, you need an attorney. And so he took the money that he had. Then he called all of us because we knew, like I said, if you get a call from Michael, it's going to be Michael going to want some money. He called all of us to hire an attorney for this young man and fought for him time after time after time. He has adopted young men into his family literally just because they didn't have anybody else. Helped people all over. This is what this man did. And if I, I pray that if I could just do half of what he did in my life, that I will have stored up some treasures myself that I can say, that was me, I did that. Not because I want to give myself some credit, but just because I want to know that just the way God has blessed me in my life, somehow he didn't save me for nothing, but what he saved me for, that I might bless somebody else. As much as I miss my friend, he lives on in the people and the legacy that he lives behind. He's never going to be gone. His treasure is still here. So many people that he touched along the way. And that's what I'm going to leave you with. His favorite song, he always told me, he liked to hear my daughter sing it. And um, he always said his favorite song, whenever he could get a request, was If I Can Help Somebody, made famous by Mahalia Jackson. So I'm going to just leave you with those words as you think about what treasure you're building along the way. The words say, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody how they're traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. My living shall not be in vain. Then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a good man or woman ought, if I can bring back beauty to a world uproot, if I can spread love's message as the master taught, then my living shall not be in vain. My living shall not be in vain, then my living shall not be in vain. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my living shall not be in vain. Amen and amen. Tomorrow's Memorial Day. And I just hope that that message touched somebody. Because there's a lot of people dealing with grief. And it's a real thing. But always remember, like I said, God made life and death. Death is not a punishment. It is a blessing. It's a hard thing to endure when you're left behind. But what are you going to do with your time? Because at the end of the day, at the end of your life, when it's all said and done, we all have an opportunity to have a treasure, whatever we choose to build up. As the doors of the church are open and the doors of the kingdom are open, I just want us, as we're thinking about some of these terrible tragedies that we've heard about and witnessed, as we think about all of the things that are, not, that are going wrong in the world, remember that there is some right that still makes a difference. Wherever there's darkness, there's light. Wherever there's evil, there's good. And wherever there's people, we may have flaws and faults, but we do our best that we can to follow Jesus and praise God we have grace to cover the rest. I want to live in a way that I can look back and say, I did what I could do. I did my part. There's a, there's a big treasure. There's a big treasure. I, I, I hope there's somebody when that, when, when, when that will come on a day where somebody's speaking for me and say, this is the treasure that Pastor Worthen left behind. Or this is the treasure that Merritt Worthen left behind. Or this is the treasure that Mommy left behind. Or this is a treasure my friend left behind. Because that's what we can do. We can impact people all over. And we can leave 
little treasures with the people that we love. But first we have to have the treasure inside of us, which is the love and grace of Jesus. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. If there's somebody who has yet to give their life over to Jesus as Lord and Savior of their life, don't let another day go past without giving it over to him. God is what makes life worthwhile. How can we not live to serve the one that created us? All good things come from above, and everything that we do is through him. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. If you're looking for a church home, we offer Christ. Uh, we have some people that are candidates for baptism, and we're about to put the, put the uh, plastic pool out on the lawn, amen, and have some baptisms. We got a young lady who's going to be sprinkled. However you need it, we're going to do it. But we want to be sure if there's anybody else, anybody that has still uh, wants to come forward, the doors of the church are open. Anybody? Come one, come all. Then I would just say the final invitation is the one that God is asking of each and every one of us. What sort of treasures are we building up? If you feel like, yeah, you don't got much in your box, there's still time. Every day, every day is an opportunity to build your treasure. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks and praise for all that you do and all that you are. We thank you for creating us and using us despite ourselves looking past our faults and our flaws to see the best in each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for your grace that covers up our stupidity, our unkindness, our, our wrongs and our faults and our flaws. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. Instead of punishment, Lord, you always want to give us another chance. So we thank you. Lord, we ask your forgiveness for anything that we've done that's not been pleasing in your sight. And we move forward in your grace and your mercy, knowing that if we'll forgive the people around us, that you'll continue to forgive us. Lord, help us to see what's important and to stop putting energy into things that are not. Don't let us pay attention to the, what the world says, but let us pay attention to what you say. We'll be so careful to glorify you and praise you in all that we do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let the saints say, amen. Amen. And then with that, we just have a time of prayer. Because remember what we, what we said, what, what do you do? What do you do when you got things that you might not be able to fix or you need help with? You pray. So we're going to lift up the prayers of the saints because we know that the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. Ones we have already collected, ones that are on the screen. Again, we thank Bishop Cox, um, his, his wife, Reverend Gloria Cox, and the, the evangelist that prayed over me. I, can't I apologize, I can't remember her name. I just thank them for being here and standing in the gap. We uh, lift up Parenthood Ministries. We lift up all of the churches open in, in God's name. We lift up Believers Christian Fellowship as we work together towards our first VBS in what, now three years? This will be the third year to begin actually start again. Praise God. <laughs> Lifting up um, Dayton Scholars as we reach out to our youth and make sure that the summer is not just wasted, but we're pouring into them each and every week during that program. Uh, do thank God that I'm able to, to speak for myself. Thank God for a successful congregational meeting. You all praise God. We have a vision and a plan that we're working towards, and look at what God is doing. We thank God for everyone that's been healed from cancer, sickness, mental health, whatever's going on, and we pray for those that are still struggling. On our prayer of, for healing and comfort, those that have chronic illness, um, they've been listed there and continue to be lifted there. We pray for safe travel, uh, safe traveling and uh, mercies, jo jobs, uh, life situations, graduations. We're praying for our youth, uh, prayers for Ukraine and Russia, um, prayers for those that are traveling over um, for vacation. Um, we lift up, I ask for prayers for continued health, oh, continued health and healing for Pastor Worth, and thank you. And then thank you, Lord, for your blessings and placing her here. Amen. God bless you.
For Dylan Vidal, prayers for my mom, Abby Martin, and my sister, Madison, my daddy and me. Blessings, amen. Bless you. You all look, I don't even have my glasses on. Please continue to pray for the Wilborn family and their recovery also. Pray for the people's, people's family and all who call on the Lord. Amen. Wilborn family is here, said Donna Wilborn. Amen. Praise God. And uh, bless her family. Are there others? Brother Albert Watson has a mic if you um, would like to lift up a prayer. Sister Jan. Yes, I just want to um, ask for prayers for all the victims um, of the, the, the uh, shooting in Texas, for their families, and also for the surviving children um, that weren't killed, but that had, that had a friend or classmate killed. When I was seven, my best friend, who was also seven, was shot and killed by his mother along with his nine-month-old baby sister before she took her own life. And so I have an idea what those children are going through that survived. First of all, you, you don't want to believe it happened. And then you think that Christ came back from the dead and they were too. I can remember going to church and going through every room in the, in, the, in the church to see if Michael was there afterwards. And of course he wasn't. And then you, you're just devastated that it happened. And you ask why it happened. And somebody says, well, they're mentally ill and to... To a seven-year-old, mental illness means a headache. It doesn't mean that you're going to kill somebody. And then you ask, why did God let it happen? I was never angry at God, but I could never understand why this happened to my friend. You know, older people are supposed to die, not, not children. And so I just ask that you keep them in your prayers and ask that they share their feelings with other people and that the people that they talk to can give them comfort and let them feel God's loving arms around them and feel his love. It took me 40 years to finally deal with this. And, you know, I, I'm okay with it now. But every time a shooting like this happens, I go back to that seven-year-old child and, and relive those feelings. So I just ask you to keep them in prayer. Amen. Amen. We do lift up all those dealing with mental health issues, depression, and something to remember. And that goes back to what we put in the hands of God and what we put in our hands. How, what sort of difference would it make to some of the people that do the things, the horrible things that they do, if they had been shown love and kinding, kindness and caring, caring all their life? There's something that, there's a, when there's bullies in school, we can make a difference. When there's violence out on the street and you walk past it, there's a difference. When there's domestic violence going in homes and we turn a blind eye or a deaf ear, that makes a difference. So we can help that the same way we want God to intervene, we can also intervene. Amen. And then we leave the rest up to God. Brother James. I miss um, see going, I pray, um, I went out there, I'm not there with um. My son and my sister. I went out. I knew how to, knew how to die. Thinking I like God. I've been to church and nice people. I like drum set or pretty drum set. The picture and she is a nice thing my friend is. Amen. Amen. He called us nice people in church with nice people. Isn't that a good? Not everybody can say that. He's, in a, he's happy to be in church with nice people. Let us, let us be that when we leave church. <laughs> let us be that at work. Let us be that at home. And, and just praise God like he does for the people around us. Bless him and his family and his mom that has passed on and still with us. Anybody else? Pastor, for that message, um, I can relate to it um, when you spoke on think the little things that matter. Um, you know, my husband was sick and everything. I've learned that you know I lose him, um, and it's just I noticed that the little things that he does that used to get on my nerves actually, but <laughs> but I cherish it now because I look back and say, oh well, you know, that's nothing compared to what his illness became. 
And I appreciate life. It is so precious. And those little things like leaving the cabinet door open or dishes in the sink, stuff like that is irrelevant. Uh, but I think that we should cherish one another no matter what, each and every day. And, and I just thank you so much for that message. And it just opened my eyes even more, gave it more perspective on life and how precious it really is. And, and again, I, I pray for all of uh, the, the whatever's going on in the world. There's so much I can't even, you know, get it together in my mind. But I just thank God that he's in charge. When we're not uh, in charge, thank God he is. So that's what I had to say. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Donna, for that reminder that, yeah, think about that. Some of the things that we complain about, that's an irritation. I can't tell you how many times, because, you know, as a pastor, I deal with a lot of, of death and home going and dealing with counseling families and things that, that's what people miss. You know, I used to hate when this so-and-so made this noise or so-and-so didn't do that. I would do anything to have them back. To hear that, to have them do that, I would do anything for it. So that is a reminder, again, of what's important. When it really comes down to it, don't sweat the small stuff. And most of this stuff is the small stuff. And pay attention to the most important things. Sister Kay. Thank you, Pastor, for that fabulous sermon today that was really inspiring. But I want to call to everyone's attention here. Something that happened yesterday I was having a decluttering moment with three other friends of mine, and we were getting rid of things that we saw no, no more need for. So we had a little garage sale out there. And as we sat there on Philadelphia in the driveway, we saw two kids, two cars, speeding down Philadelphia and blocking both sides, both sides going up the hill from Forest Grove. Only God made it where no one was on the other side. Because yeah. there would have been nowhere for them to go at going 100 miles an hour. My Lord. Only God had to have been there to block that accident from occurring. Yes. And I, I don't know where people's minds are. And what's going on, but it is just, when, he was, when, when Marcus sung that song today, it just rocked my soul. Because yes. the only thing I could think about was God was there protecting us. And I'd also like to say that we were able to make enough money, even selling stuff for 50 cents, a dollar, $10, $20 to give a significant contribution to our church. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen. So, so we have some workers out there, and I know, I don't know, some people might want their names. I know that um, Sister Ethel Smith came around, and she's donated and helped, and uh, Maria worked like a Trojan. <laughs> I tell you, she was working very hard, and uh, uh, Marsh, um, Margie uh, Baker and, jo and, and Josephine. I mean, it was fun, too. It was Amen. fun. Amen. So we took, uh, 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 but we saw that devastating situation go on, and we were just like, you know. So, but anyway, it was a beautiful day, and we're blessed and grateful for the wonderful things that we have coming. We don't want to think about fear. We can't put fear in this because we have faith. Yes. You can't have fear and faith. Amen. Yes. Amen. So thank you so much. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Brother Albert right here with Sister Deborah. Has anybody seen Brother Marcus? Brother Marcus? We had kids. He might be in class. Okay. I just want to say a prayer that, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, me and my family, my brother and my sisters, uh, my sister and my brothers, uh, decorated my mother's and father's grave yesterday. And it was a great day because the four of us were all together. And I just, and we got along. <laughs> so I am grateful for that. Yes, thank you. Amen, amen. 
Could somebody uh, get Brother Marcus? I think we there's a request for him to uh, finish with that song, Go Out the Way We Came In. Thank you, Brother. Oh, there he is. There he is. All right. Um, we're about to pray, and then uh, that song that you blessed us with, we, you're going to bless us on the way out if that's all right. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? All right. Remember. Let's pray that let's let's pray that serenity prayer. Lord, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Remember, you are God's beloved. The Holy Spirit lives in you, each and every one of you. Christ's compassion shines forth in what you do. Live as those who know and have experienced God's goodness. Go now in peace. Recuerda que eres el amado de Dios. El Espíritu Santo vive en ti. La compasión de Cristo brilla en lo que haces. Vive como aquellos que conocen y han experimentado la bondad de Dios. Ve ahora en paz. We invite you to stand for our benediction and then our closing song to get us going out the right way, walking with God. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time and forevermore. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless each and every person that's gathered here. All of the people that are, whether they're online, wherever they are, everyone who is trusting and believing in you. Lord, we ask that you touch those who don't know you yet. Lord, let us be a light in the darkness as we go forward that we might make a difference. Lord, help us store up for our, not only for ourselves, but for the world, treasures that you're keeping in heaven that will bless the people around us. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. Let the church say amen. amen. Take it, Brother amen. Marcus. Hallelujah. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord, walk with me, while I'm on my tedious journey, Lord, I want you, Jesus, to walk. God.